Hello everyone, new week at Gress Wells. Gonna get a new car in the workshop and then we're gonna show you what it is. Cool, right? Formerly known as the Dat Slam. So that slams sunny, apparently. This is literally the last time that it will run its standard engine and hydraulics because it's going for a full makeover, which includes putting these arches on and uh, banging this bad boy in. You will notice that these are actually my wheels and last time I drove it I did this which is horrible if I'm honest it really upset me but you know it is what it is so yeah this car is going back static it's getting a 12a rotary in it the rotary is seriously seriously ported I'm not putting the whole engine in. I'm literally just getting it mounted. I think that's about it for now, but I'm sure in future we will see it running and then I'll do more videos on it. But obviously I'm doing the arches, doing the coilover conversion. I'm doing the rotary mounting and maybe a few other little bits and bobs. It's quite a cool car and uh, a lot of people liked it on Instagram. So it's probably gonna be a lot of people that like it on YouTube as well. So, on the ramp now, this is the little engine that's in there. Little inline for, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's a bulletproof engine, probably. Uh, you'll probably look at that and go, you know what that is. I want to say A series, but that's probably completely wrong. But yeah, that's coming out. There is some issues that I've actually seen down here where there's a bit of rust underneath there and also down there under the brakes. So obviously with the rotary going in here, I need to make engine mounts, clearance the subframe, uh, obviously get rid of all of most of this and you know, strip it down. But before I make it immobile, I'm gonna work on getting these arches on the car. This is going on like that, something like that. And I basically got to cut all the arches out underneath Weld it together. I'm going to riv nut all of these holes. That basically gets rid of this rust. And it's a lot easier to put an arch on than fix rust properly. So, you probably noticed already, the rear door is literally just not going to be in use. It's literally going to be shut. <laughs> so I'm going to spend some time now marking these up, trying to get them on the car at the right height and stuff like that. And then I'll cut it up. Right, arch is mocked up here. So we've got the front and the rear just lined up the center of the pin into the center of the hub. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much where it's gonna be. A lot of you might be questioning why we're actually doing this. Now I'm gonna put in some pictures here of what this car is sort of like taking inspiration from. And I don't know what they are. I think they're quite cool little race cars. Although this is an estate, it should give you the same sort of look. So I'm basically happy with where they're sitting. Gonna drill some holes into them. I haven't got enough rib nuts, so I'm gonna do here and here to just keep it in one piece. And then from there, I can then draw around it and then mark out where all the arch is gonna be underneath because obviously we're gonna cut this skin off here. And as soon as we cut that, weld it all together. Right, now that's 
So you can probably see there's quite a big gap here. Now, what I'm gonna do is obviously gonna ribbon up this one. I'm gonna ribbon up this one over here because there's obviously a gap like this here as well. And get a heat gun on it because a heat gun is very good for fiberglass. If you heat fiberglass up, you're basically like melting the resin that is used to make the fiberglass. So if you heat the fiberglass up, it then sort of makes it soft and you can push it over. And if you hold it in that position, then that way it can basically be remolded, so to speak. Uh, and then once it's dry, it'll go hard again. So I'm gonna rip up this one, get this one, push them in, and then we'll be happy. Right, so both arches are now mounted front and back, We're just underneath this swage line, front and rear. So what we need to do now is basically, I could do this one. Underneath here, we can cut this arch out fairly easy. What I'll do is, is I'll take these off and then I'll mark down like an inch off the bolt holes and then I'll cut all the way around it. So you can't see any of like, you know, all that arch down here. I'll probably cut it from here all the way up and just make sure that's good. And then on the rear, this is where it gets tricky because obviously the door is involved here. Now, you can see here is that, you know, part of that door is up and involved on here. So what I'm gonna do is probably gonna cut the door back just enough to clear. I don't wanna cut any of the door that basically stops the door from sealing in here. So basically what I wanna cut on the inside and try and weld the two skins of the outer arch and the inner arch together. That way we can actually create a decent seal and not let any of the like, elements come into the car when it's like driving down the road again. So I'm gonna work on that, pull this off, mark it all out and start cutting. This is crusty, man. This is like the issue, you see? Um, so I'm gonna cut this edge here, get the outer skin off, and then I guess I'll just start working towards trying to figure out a way to do it because the door seals on this edge here. And uh, well, it's just left an idea, wasn't it? Peas, 20 peas, 10. Fucking hell. No way. <laughs> Fucking lash artists. So, yeah, that was in this little hole here. Now, as you can see, it's very, very rotten. Uh, quite considerably, but this bit's okay. Like, the, the deal is, I'm gonna obviously hit this from behind here, and then I'm gonna weld this to that panel, and then you know, trim it, reseal it. This one here, as I said before, we want the door to seal on there, but it's really just pretty much not gonna be able to do that. So I'm thinking we'll just cut into this line here, up to there, and then come back up here, and then just sort of like tie it in around there and not worry about the seal because the door's not gonna be used. We can fucking run a bead of seal around the door if we really wanted to. Uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna cut in here and then just down here, plate it all up and seal it all up. Jobs are good and arch will go back on, bish bash bosh, you're good. Nice. Yeah, single skin there. Jobs are good and. Get this skin 
to touch this skin. You don't really want to push this skin in. You just want this to touch the outside. Otherwise, you'll get that bend in from like here, and the arch will sit all skew in. So just smack this metal out. Just go slowly all the way around, and then eventually it will touch. But it may take a while. But just just work it all the way around. Like you would, like if you was rolling an arch. cutting slits and then folding them over don't do that it's horrible i'm just cutting the slits in it now because it sort of relieves a little bit of tension on this whole panel and it should help us get that a bit closer to there because you probably might be able to see there's a strengthener right here so it's a little bit tougher than i was anticipating but we'll get there just a lot more persuasion Bit of zinc primer around there, sealed it all up, grind it back a little bit. Obviously I can't make it flush because I've literally welded this panel to that panel. So grinding that flush means it will just all fall apart. So just, just enough to clean it up a little bit. I welded it all the way around because it basically helps when you come to seal it up sort of thing. If you've got like a tack down here, you've got to put loads of seam sealer on. This way, I welded it all the way around. I could just do a little skim of seam sealer, bang it back on, spray over the top of it, jobs are good. In. Now I've got another bolt in here, another bolt in there. This one doesn't really matter. What we're gonna try and do now is obviously now this is bolted in, I'm gonna push this in with the heat gun, heat that up, get it a bit soft and try and mold it into it. Again, try and not to, you know, make this panel reach there. Just sort of need to, you know, massage it. Obviously there's gonna be an element of both, but that's what I'm gonna try and do now.
if I hold that there for a couple of days, it might just stay like that. So that is what is going to happen. So we have this all mounted up. Obviously, we haven't got this one in. But that's fine. I'm literally waiting for a bunch of rivnuts to get it fully in. So I just nut and bolted these ones for now. Uh, I think this is probably going to have an edge in all the way around. So that odd gap there that should be filled with just edging again there. I'm obviously leaving this in there for a couple of days because seeing other people, YouTube and stuff like that, do this before. Like, put body kits and stuff on. And if you keep them on there, and just leave them on in like this sort of thing. Eventually they'll just mold to that sort of shape sort of thing. So if you leave them on, get them mounted, and then like a couple of weeks, they'll, you know, form to that shape sort of thing. Uh, usually if you had like a big fiberglass bumper and you like put it on, like hung it from something in the middle, the bumper would be like this sort of shape because it, over time they just sort of like sag. So it's good to have your bumpers and stuff fitted. And then afterwards you can go and paint it. Make sure you get all the fiberglass fitted before you paint it because yeah, it's not very good if you don't. Need to get some stone chip on this tomorrow. Seam seal it because my seam seal has run out. And then I'll do the same for the front and the rear. The uh, bolts for this one here, uh, they need to be quite short because the wheel tub is literally like up against it here. So I need to sort that out. Same again down here. Get that all bolted in, riv nutted properly. Uh, yeah, this one will be pretty decent. If you shut this, yeah, it's like a full continuous thing. Obviously the arch comes down here like this. So I've left this for now. Uh, obviously you can see it's slightly rotten, but you won't see it anyway. What I next need to do is take the hydraulics off because this car's going back to coilovers. These hydraulics have been on this car forever. And uh, basically we're gonna put a spring on there and a separate shock because this car has been converted to a five link, four link. Uh, yeah, so it's usually like a straight axle with leaf springs, I imagine. But yeah, this one's got a five link or four link. Is it a five or four? I don't know. Either way, it's getting coil overs on it. Same on the front that you can see the line there. These are uh, ready to be taken off. So we can put some S13 coil overs on it on the front at least. On the back, we might have to do something else. But the coilovers will be going on the front the same way as we did the skyline in this video. And yeah. You probably just noticed me using this to blow down the weld. And that's basically what I have done to basically stop getting too much heat into the weld. I'm gonna weld it, wait till it stops going red and it sort of like grays off and then you wanna hit it with this. It's better than warping a big long panel. So if you wondered why, that's why. This air was currently supported by Hyundai Power Product UK. See, it's molded itself to it overnight. I actually cleaned my wheels of all the salt and uh, yeah, they're ruined. These faces are diamond cut with some clear over the top and uh, I regret my life decisions significantly. So yeah, if you like the Datsun, let me know. Uh, it's obviously gonna be a lot more work needs to be done to it, obviously mounting the engine. I did gloss over that, but yeah, there is a rotary engine going in this car. I've got to make a new engine mount for the front, get the gearbox mounted, measure up for the prop shaft, etc., etc. So that'll be really cool. Obviously I need to do a little welding bits inside the engine bay where it's rusty. And yeah, just get all the rest of the flares mounted properly, put the coilovers on and that will be Pretty much it was what we'll do for that car in here. And uh, Jack can get the rest of it sort of running and maybe I need to do some other bits and bobs like mount the radio and stuff like that for him. But So yeah, that concludes this video for now. I have been doing a Mark II Jetta Coupe on the ramp. So I've mounted all the uh, air system here on this little new board. It's obviously a second hand kit, V2 management, old school, but does the job. I haven't actually filmed any of this car, but it's a 1.3 automatic Jetta Coupe. Obviously they never made those in the UK, so they're all left hand drive. I'm not sure if they got these in the US market either. They might have done, but very clean car. Underneath is like immaculate. It's got a set of BBS RFs on it. And obviously the air is going on. 
And yeah, I've just not filmed anything because I've just been grinding. As you know, I've got an expensive year coming up, so contact me over at Gresswells. If you want something done to your car, let me know, we can talk about it. And if it's an air install, I'd love to do it because I love doing air installs. They're much easier than doing all this custom stuff. But yeah. And as you know, I've been grinding because I've got a very expensive year ahead. So if you've got anything you want done over at Gresswells, please let me know and uh, we can have a chat about it. I have actually bought another vehicle as well. Nothing spectacular. And you might think, wow, another car, but it was a good deal and I couldn't pass it up and it was literally less than 10 minutes away from my house. And yeah, I just thought I'd leave that with you. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.